trades for today. I traded Snap right here. I haven't been getting much follow through on longs. So even though it did classic 45 degree pullback to the VWAP broke out here, I didn't trust it. I never have any good luck with Snap anyway. Although it makes runs like this, I seem to get in on the ones like this. Like this is one I would have taken. I didn't take it. I won't take it now because it's too extended. It's too big of a green candle. So I expect to pull back halfway. There goes AMD stopping me out to the upside. I mean, it's a green trade, but still, that thing won't follow through. Of course, I'm trying to call a top on it. I'll show you in a minute. So anyway, this was a good trade. 80, 50 cents. AMD and look, snap. Both got a bull candle at the same time. Computer orders. AMD, which I normally like, it has its, its, AMD gets in different moods. It'll get in a trendy mood or it'll get in a stupid mood like this right here. Or it'll get in a nice mood like this right here. So you just got to pick your days, you know, it's like an, an old girlfriend you broke up with. You, you don't want to, you, you got to pick your time when you want to mess with her. <laughs> you got to make sure she's in a good mood. Let me switch to, I'm going to leave it on two minutes. So anyway, I uh, shorted here, took some quick profit. Uh, great. Longed it here, failed. Shorted it here, and this was a good trade. So I had a nice green trade. I turned it from green to red and back to green. So this was a good trade. I didn't trust the reversal again, just like snap. And that kind of pissed me off because of how far it ran. I guess I need to realize when you see something like this, like, okay, it dropped, consolidated, dropped. It didn't even do three legs, really. And just like one or two candle drops and then consolidation, one candle drop, consolidation, then it reverses. I got to realize that that's an indication of a strong stock. Even though it's coming down, it's a strong stock. And even though it's a gap down, it's somebody doesn't want, somebody's buying in here. They, they don't want this thing to, to dump off. I mean, it's this thing has had some huge runs, like $5 runs in the last several weeks. So anyway, uh, after this big run here, I tried to call a top, which I'm not supposed to do, but it was small share size. So I shorted here, stopped out. Then I said, okay, don't be stupid. It's strong over this consolidation area here. I'm going to go long. Went long. Stopped out before the bottom of the channel. Of course, I didn't have the channel drawn in at that time. But I'm like, that's enough. It shouldn't. This is one of Oliver Velez's rules. And I even got this in too many candles. Well, actually, I should have got in here. And the green took out this red candle. But anyway, I got in here. And your stop's supposed to be under this candle, which it would it came back and stopped me out. So I normally don't use that rule. I'm just saying that's one of his rules. My stop would normally be down here, but I'm like, that's enough. This thing, I, I'm going to quit fooling with it. Then I quit fooling with it, and then 20, 30 minutes later, I, uh, I said, okay, this thing's going to fail again, at least down at the VWAP. So I shorted it here, added took profit, no follow through. I could have took profit along here easily. I'm like, nope, not doing it. I'm taking profit at 50 or I'm going to stop out. And I stopped out. <laughs> it's just, it doesn't want to go. Somebody wants this thing big time. Look, it, it was doing the same thing up in here. Every time it would get, or actually, I mean, on my first short, right in here. Every time it would get to this area here, shoot back up, shoot back up. Somebody wanted it long. DraftKings shorted it, took profit, took profit at the very bottom, and then let it stop me out right here. That was a nice trade. Almost 50 cents. Tried it again. No follow through. It's like everything had a big up day yesterday. And look, and it's rent. Look at this run. I'm hoping what my play was was for a pullback to here at least. 
and maybe down here. In other words, halfway back of this huge power move here. But it, they're not having anything of it. The market's doing the same thing, breaking out again. So I had to take little minuscule profits and, you know, keep trying, get in and out, get it in and out. I find that's the best way. I don't, I mean, I don't short here, put my stop up over here, and just wait. It just never works out for me. I end up losing. Uh, what did I do here? I shorted, added, stopped out on both of them. That was basically even small loser. Switchback energy was my trade of the day, but I, I didn't get the shares I wanted. Or I, I wouldn't even be trading right now. <laughs> what did this thing move? Thirty-nine thirty, a dollar. It was just these candles were so surprising. That's why I sold here. I'm like, there's no way. It, First of all, when it broke over 13, I was happy. I mean, it broke over 40. And then it started coming up through here. I mean, these are on two minute. Let's see what it looks like on one minute. The same. <laughs> it's all green. I don't know why I sold it. I was just so surprised that it wasn't, it was running. I haven't got in a long that ran so good. And I don't can't remember when. So it just blew my mind. So that's why I, I took profit. I think I tried to take it here right before 50, but ended up getting around 37. I missed like another 60 cents. But still, I was almost my best trade. JD was my best trade. Um, I try not to trade memories. What I mean by that is I, I killed JD yesterday. I think it was, yeah, it was JD. I kept thinking it was Neo, but it was JD. I killed it so bad. I got like a total of like $2 or maybe even more. One run was $1.50 on one trade. But anyway, you don't want to get in that habit because I've done that before. You know, you get friendly with a stock. You're like, oh, man, I've traded that thing three days in a row. And then it'll just kill you one day. It'll just chop you up. But anyway, I um, shorted it here at 70 70 cents, uh, 60 cents. Took profit right here on this spike, and then it spiked me out here for the last piece. But then, shorted it again at 91. Got profit here as low, so another 65 cents. So like a dollar fifty on this thing again. And I got almost two dollars yesterday. JD has his days too. Today was decent, but it'll have, I only trade it when it has days when it's busy. Like this volume here, I, I, I normally don't trade under under 80,000, which would be this range. But some of these were dipping. I realize that they lull or they ebb down in the lower amounts, but in the 20s, that's ridiculous. Under 50, it's like, no. If it's got a long stretch of under 50, like right in here, I probably didn't even check. Especially if it's a long. If it's a long and it's got range of like under 50,000 shares, I'm not going to even touch it. It's got to at least be up close to 100. Um, but if it's a short, I will. But I really shouldn't even have taken this. I probably didn't even look at it. It's right at 44. It turned out good. I'm not saying the stocks don't move. Stocks with small shares can move more than stocks with a lot of trading a lot of shares. In fact, they do. But they're too flighty and they're too easily maneuvered. And I get spiked out a lot. I like to have a stock where I can place my stop my buy orders and my profit orders and let it hit them and if I do that on a small stock somebody will see it and just buy it like if it's trading 20,000 shares or something and I put a stop up here somebody will just buy it it happens to me all the time so I like bigger bigger share I mean bigger volume so that was it for today I got a full day's profit I had uh, six trades all green although one of them was like I literally, not kidding you, 31 cents. I didn't show you that one. <laughs> All green day.